What's going on, everybody? It's another week. Move this over here. Move this over here. Good evening, Juan. Gary, good to have you on here. Got the normal crew. Federico, good to have you on here too. Let's see. All right. Let me. What I'm going to do tonight is I've got you guys uh, on here. I want you guys, uh, the ones, if, I know there's some people on here that don't have our indicators at all, but I want you to give me a symbol and I'm just going to go through it and analyze it for today. Like whatever you created today. Yes, that's my favorite. Uh, answer dismissed. All right, I didn't trade today, guys. Um, I had stuff going on, and I was gone from the house all day today. Uh, so I have no idea what the ES even did today. So let's go to daily. I am going to screen share this desktop. Oh, that's awesome, Frederico. That uh, look at this is too funny. Uh, yesterday, you guys look at this channel on the ES. We were let me just make this bigger. We were like right here at 30.22, and we ended up going all the way down to 29.66. That was a, that was one if, actually, let's see, today's Wednesday, yeah. This one here, uh, I had posted, if you guys watched my post, I said I wouldn't go, I just don't think we're gonna go above, because uh, we've respected this channel quite a bit. And we had 10 day, 10 candles basically that we've been in this lower half of the channel. Now, will we break through? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, this is where we are right now that uh, we might pop through. We may. I mean, we came up, tested it, came back down, and now we're testing it again. And we'll see what happens from there. So, all right. So, I'm going to run through this as if. This was, I would have this channel on here first to see where we're at on the big picture of earlier today. Then I'm going to go down to a four hour chart and I'm going to look at it on a 240. Don't really need to draw another channel. Now, 245, nine o'clock, this candle. That dropped down low. Boy, it dropped off at the open, didn't it? Um, yeah, 29.65. So I would have drawn a 240 channel, which we are going to go down to regression trend. And you guys know from watching me every week, I have different ones saved in here. You can go to my um, JW Tick Trader profile underneath Trading View. And I have videos in there on how to make uh, these defaults so that you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel every time you do it. But I'm going to do a, I put, that says 15 minute, but that's just a red channel instead of a white channel. So you're going to click the bottom of that low, which is off of the long-term daily channel that we bounced off of and we're going up. 
So, and then this was the nine o'clock. Now I go to the candle bottom, doesn't matter because it's gonna, it does it by high, low, close divided by three. So on top of that, one, once I dropped that channel on there, if you all can see this, on a 240, if you read the price action breakdown book that we talk about, I do, uh, look at, okay, not only were we in the long-term daily channel, and this was your signal to go long right here. I mean, this was a no-brainer one right here off the bottom. We went all the way up, touched, came back. Well, now that we have a new channel right here, look how we've respected this uptrend. You've only wicked out of it twice. Came back down, tested that center channel line, came back down. Then we went down to the bottom. There's your entry point just using channels from there. And just a straight up run, I mean, almost green candles all the way up. And then across that center channel line, and then we went back today, what'd we do? We went all the way to the bottom. If I would have been trading this, this would have been my entry was right here. That's the off there. So, all right, so white channel line we did on a daily time frame and gap down, then bounce. With Trevor, the supply zone deal is just a, uh, a free indicator on TradingView that paints. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I will tell you right now, I'm not the best at identifying supply and demand zones. Uh, I've just never paid attention to them that much. Uh, I, I look at them as support and resistant lines. Um, but this helps me on, uh, say right here, that this is a supply zone or demand zone at 29.15. If I go over here to a five minute chart, 29, uh, what was it, 15, It'll be back over here. I, I can take that from a 240, 29.15, I can draw that on here if I wanted to, for instance, let's just say that I came over here and price range, and I'm gonna go to the bottom of that wick. Let's go right here. Now I could make that, let's make this thing. Let's just say that I made, that's my supply zone or demand zone to go along. I can make that green so that I know that that's a demand and I can make it red uh, if I wanted it to be the other way around. Let's just make this green just for our purposes. All right, and then you always lock it, right click and lock. Now, one of the things on those settings is visibility and this is one of the things I absolutely love about TradingView is you can draw something on one chart and it shows up on the other ones but you can also take it off uh, now since this is and you can extend uh, I can take that off if I don't want it to go left because I don't really care if it's over there but by going left you can see that there was a supply zone in there too that's almost the same coming off there. Um, plus we came back and read, I kind of like to see if we've retested it. And this is a fresh demand zone if we make it back down there to it. Um, if we do, I bet you it'll be over here in this channel line. So anyhow, that uh, that's what that indicator is there. For, um, so we've got your white channel line is your daily, okay? Your red channel line is your 240. Now I haven't even gone to a weekly. Let's go over here. Weekly is about the same. I'm not gonna draw a new one. Um, it's pretty close to monthly. We don't want, we haven't been in it long enough to do a channel on it. So all right, so we did daily, then we did 240. And then now I'm going to go down to an hour. And we're going to look at this. 
All right, from an hourly standpoint, there's your 8.30 open. Yep. And that's like almost a given that thing was going down. If you had your channel, if you didn't have your channel on here, you would have no idea that it was going down there. Gary, it just depends on, uh, this is what, I'm kind of going through my process of how I do this. You start out on a daily to see what the overall trend is. That one of the things that I've heard many times that people have said is if you want to eliminate half your losses, and I don't know where that number came from, um, that's just what I've heard a bunch of times from a bunch of different people that have made a lot more money than I ever have. And they said, if you want to cut your losses, if the trend is up, only take long trades. If the trend is down, only take short trades. You eliminate half your losses. Now, I like trying to catch the reversal, uh, but it is what it is. But on this daily, look at this 240 channel. We're close to pulling over there. We're above that, that 240 channel, we're above. So even though the center channel line is right here, I'm kind of feeling more confident that this thing's gonna go longer. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, that's just what it shows to me. But let's, uh, let's go down to one hour. And from that, you can isolate down here. You want to isolate your wave count now. Uh, you can isolate down here, which was the 14th. But I don't want to go that far back. Uh, we can. I'm going to go 26, 27. Really, truthfully, I need to be about right in here. But I'm going to take this low right here. I, I like that because this is a trend up. And that's almost, to me, looks like a one, two, a three, a four. And this, this looks like it was a fifth wave move is what it looks like on an hour chart. And then a pullback, which probably is a four. And we're probably on a fifth wave move right now. Let's see. So let's isolate. Now, if you remember, let me turn these on. And I got to go back to where our chart's on here. Here's our bar count right here, bar number. So I'm going to hover underneath that red candle as 3,062. So we're going to go up to Elliott Wave, hit the sprocket, and we're going to change that to 3,072. I'm going to click OK. Takes about five to seven seconds, and voila! Looky there, I spotted Elliott Wave and didn't even have it on there. Now let me turn off bits. All right, so isolating off that low down there, we had a one and a two, three. We had a four and a fifth wave move, which turned into a longer third wave. The fifth wave just kept going, so we had a, a longer, uh, the fifth wave turned into a longer three. We had a pullback into here. All right, so earlier today, if you were in this trade, and let, let's actually look at both Elliott waves. Um, I know we jump into last week, but let's just look at it real uh, We don't have that one on there. Well, we'll go with this three and four that we have now. One of your rules that you have to do is you have to do a channel on your third to fourth wave pullback. And I have it saved in here as W5T Wave 4 Pullback Channel. It's very easy. You just click the top of the Wave 3 and click the bottom of the Wave 4. All right. Look how nice that came out of there. We came out of that channel, but it pulled back. Next candle open, what did it do? It came down, tested the top of that channel and it tested the bottom of the 6-4 moving average and then pulled back up. Now your safe entry is above the 6-4 moving average line. If you look down here, your long-term bias dots, uh, your long-term time frames are long. That's good. Your 
535 oscillator here. Let me turn this back on. We are going to do a Fibonacci on it. And it's right here, Fib retracement. I also, if you look underneath my JW Tick Trader, um, you can save this Fib. So you go to the low of the wave four, right here, you go back to the high of wave three, which is right there. I'm gonna drop it. Wait, let me go right here. Wave three is that candle right there. So I'm gonna drop it on there. We did not crown. I, if you watch me weekly and some of my posts, I don't like taking a fifth wave move unless it crowns. Uh, I'll take them, but uh, if it's a very fast day, a lot of times it'll just come down, touch and go, and it never has time to crown. When they crown, they usually work and they work pretty well. Um, this one crowned out perfect. Um, you also, now you did not, your stochastic crossed over. It crossed over on this candle right here in the middle. And what did I just say on our rules? You need to be, now me personally, since we touched the bottom of that 6-4 moving average and then came out, that I would have taken that at the close of that candle next to it. Uh, because we're out of the green, we have a green dot, the red lines are getting shorter and shorter on the uh, oscillator, and we had a, a curve around on the stochastic. Uh, what, what do you mean, Juan, and what does it measure? So we got that crossover. You got the green arrow down here that it crossed over to go on this candle right here, which was good. The oscillator. I honestly, Juan, I have no idea, and you know what? I don't question it. I just follow the rules. That One of the things that I have learned in this journey, uh, two and a half years, almost – two and a half years, um, is quit trying to be a genius and quit trying to figure out um, what makes everything tick, if that makes sense. Uh, if somebody else wants to answer that question of what the oscillator measures, uh, you're more welcome to answer it. That I'm not trying to dodge the question, Juan. I honestly don't know. I, I remember when I first started trading, I was – making profitable trades and somebody asked me if I was uh, trading the S&P or the Dow and I said, I don't know, uh, it's the one that's the ES. <laughs> so if, if that didn't tell you, I was so stupid, I didn't even know what the uh, uh, S&P 500 was. I just knew it was the ES uh, one. But if that, the purpose of that is to let you know that you just follow the rules. It doesn't matter what symbol is on your chart. You just follow the rules. And if the rules say you get met. So for this one to go along, we isolated the wave count. All right. Uh, on, let's see if I can zoom out here and see if I can get a, okay, there's the daily. Let's zoom back in. That's one of the things I also love about trading views. You can see your longer time frames like that. So, on a daily time frame, we're in an uptrend. On a 240, which is this red dots right here, even though we're on a one hour chart right now, on a 240, we're in an uptrend. So positive, positive. We did our wave count and we have a fourth wave pullback. That's positive. We did our channel from the third high the third wave high to the fourth wave low and just uh, well let me run through the rules right so there's uh one two three all right bias is green solid green there's four now i like on the fourth wave pullback to see some yellow and maybe some red uh but we're in an uptrend so we just really didn't get any but that's okay so we have four things saying you need to go long then you have your uh, 535 oscillator. We did the uh, FIB, 9140 FIB on it. We crowned and we did not violate it. I really like a crown. There's not five reasons to take this trade. Your false breakout over here, see where, let me get in here. 
See where we came down in here, touch, and then it kind of went back up again? Look at your, fa your false breakout here, um, stochastic. It was telling you stay in that trade. Uh, don't, be, don't be getting out. And then you got the crossover with the arrow right here. Even though it went over there and touched that uh, arrow, it gave you the okay uh, that it was going down. So there's six reasons your stochastic crossover was going down. There's your reason to uh, – or that on the fourth wave pullback, it went down. But you got your green to go up, and there's your six. So daily channel, uh, uptrend. 240 channel, uptrend. One hour chart inside of the 240 uptrend. Fourth uh, isolated fourth wave pullback did the channel perfect on there. We came out of there. There's reason three. I forgot actually six four moving average. We got above it. There's four bias dots green. There's five oscillator uh, crown did not violate the 140 six. Uh, stochastics crossed over on that same candle that was above, there's seven. So I have seven reasons to take this trade and not one reason not to take it. That's a trade that you take. Now, if you had some conflicting yellow dots in here, you crown below. If it crowns outside of the 140, I absolutely do not take it. I don't care where it's at, what it does. It. I have been burned. If it crowns past 140 sometimes they work but i just don't mess with it trevor uh i honestly don't know what the crown is uh what that 530 or what the 535 oscillator is uh you'll have to google it and figure it out yourself i just know that's what the rule is 0.77 I don't know what you're talking about. This one shows 0 0.76. It's 1.4 and here, let me show you on the oscillator. Oh, let me go on. There's your settings if you guys want to screenshot that. That's how you set your Fib retracement. That's where you need um, change that zero. I leave that as gray for the center line and then green for the point 0 0.9 and red for the 1.4. That's your pullback. You don't want to go past that 1.4. There's some mathematician rule, whatever. I'm sure that, uh, some kind of uh, fib levels that come in there. I'm not smart enough to figure those out. I just know how to follow the rules on it. Sure, I'd be happy to do it. Let's crack. Let's delete this. All right, we're gonna go back up here to Fibonacci. And I'm gonna actually, let's just click over here so you can see it. I'm gonna hit Fib Retracement. Okay, then I'm gonna click the box down. I'm gonna hit W5T9140. And then where that fourth wave crown down, you're gonna go to the center line. You're just gonna click it once, and you're gonna drag it up to the high of wave three. And if you see my mouse moving around, uh, I can set it on that candle right there. There's the high of wave three. We crowned and did not violate it. I like that, it looks good. Uh, what about the numbers, Trisha? Tell Mark I said hi too, by the way, Trish. In the green of the chart. Uh, I don't understand what you're saying about um, the way th the numbers on the chart in the green. You have your microphone, Trish. I can click you on and you can explain it to me. Uh, let's see where my 
participants. There you go. Trish, you... Gary, I don't know if I want to click on you. <laughs> I'll, I'll click on you in a second. There you go. What you got? Okay, so you're looking at the um, green, yellow, and red flag there on the three to the four. Yep. From here to here. There? Yep. I can hear you. I lost you. Trish, we lost your, we lost Trish. She'll click, uh, she'll log back on here. All right, let me get you, Gary. All right, Gary, you're good. If you unmute your microphone. You got me? You go. What question did you got, man? No, no, I was just going to follow up on Trish. Okay. Were you looking at the, uh, the Elliott wave, the green line on top? Okay. The yes. green line? There's about yep. a There's about a 12-digit number that's showing up. Oh, that is, that is the Pearson something, which I'm not smart enough to figure that out. Pearson's R, I believe if I take that off, yeah, it comes off. Okay, uh, that's, that's what I think she was talking about. Okay, yep, if you click it on, uh, it's something of, I don't know, it's some kind of, you have to Google what Pearson's R is. Uh, Paul, Paul likes it uh, quite a bit that, like basically it's very accurate when you get outside of that, uh, whatever it is. And it, it, it's the same way, Gary, I have no idea. <laughs> I just follow the hey, You got away easy. Yep, uh, thanks Gary. All right. All right. So let's um, let's do a now. Now we're on a one hour chart. OK, let's go down to a 15 minute. I'm going to leave that fourth wave pullback channel on there. Because I know from the one hour time frame that that's a fourth wave pullback. All right. Typically which we did today after that fourth wave, after we did the fifth wave move, it came down to the bottom of that 240 channel. And it usually comes darn close to tagging that uh, fourth wave pullback. Why? I have no idea. It's just something that I've um, picked up on uh, just watching the markets for so long. Uh, but going down to a 15 minutes, it is giving you off this channel line, it's almost giving an, uh, an entry, but let's turn on roller coaster. Now look at the fourth wave pullback. This was your high of your three to the low of your four. All right, and lo and behold, look where the low of the four is, where, it end, where the roller coaster move ended. It was right inside that channel took the channel almost from the channel top and took it down about almost close to the center, took you all the way to the bottom and then back down to the wave four uh, pullback. Um, you also had part of that wave three coming up that you had a roller coaster move there where that was a really good move. And what makes that move more powerful to me is it's coming off a center channel line. We came over the center, pulled back below, came above it, and then it retested it again. And as soon as it retested after that, and you know, my thing is, I don't like taking the roller coaster until it breaks the first, I call it step that it makes. And do I miss out on, you know, a few ticks of profit? Yes. But I usually miss out on a potential loss because it usually, once it breaks that first step, it usually keeps going. Uh, if they ever fail, they usually just stay one step all the way across, if that makes sense. 
um, on it. So here was a nice move above it. And that was part of the, that was the fifth wave move originally. That was a three, a four, and a five. And then it came back down and went longer. But on the flip side, coming back down on your 15 minute time frame, we know this is a one hour channel pullback. You've got a uh, roller coaster move down on there. I mean, that was 3,050 to 2,983. That's 17 points, a lot of ticks, 68 ticks. Um, and then going back to your hour chart, you would know that that was the fifth wave move out to take that move there. Now, after it completed the fifth wave move, okay, you're done. What are you going to do? Looky here, you got a roller coaster move that came back down below the channel, went, it went below it, then went back up, and then it came down. And when it did, it came down hard. And if you look, it never even did the first uh, level uh, that you want to call it uh, first step. It just took off and went down. And it went all the way to the bottom of the channel. Now, you would have no idea where this was going to stop. Now, none of us know, know where it's going to stop. I have to preface that. Uh, but by doing these channels, you have a pretty damn good idea where you're going to stop. And look where it stopped. I mean, it went... 29, 68, 50, it went to 60, it went three points, 12 ticks below that center channel or the bottom channel line. Then came back up and rocketed all the way back up to the middle of that channel. It's uh, 30, 25, I mean, it, well, it kept on going after that. Now, if you isolate on this 15 minute, I bet you, let's isolate on here. That is candle 10,134. So we're going to go over here. 10,134. This looks like some kind of a fifth wave move to me. I may be wrong. By golly, look at there. It, uh, it is. And a lot of times that, let's see, you have your one and a two. You have your three above. We actually have not hit the fourth yet. Yeah, all right, it's painted the three. Typically when it paints the three, it's running out of juice. Because uh, it, it doesn't put the three in there yet until it runs out of juice. Now, I'm gonna guess it's gonna come back down in here and touch the center channel line again for the four and then a race up to the top of that channel. We'll see tomorrow that uh, I always like going back and looking at these after we do the Wednesday on Thursday, I like going back through and be like, look, it actually, you know, it worked out or this is why I wouldn't have taken it. And it worked out really good that we didn't take it. Uh, now you can go down even further into, and that's what I like about leaving that fourth way or the fourth pullback uh, on there from the higher time frame. I know that that fourth wave, when we drew this, it's somewhere right around here. Well, look at this. You got a early indicator at 29.94. You got a roller coaster move to go long. Look how many roller coaster moves you had in that fourth wave pullback. You had one great move there going uh, up for the third. Then you had another. Uh, roller coaster move down, two profitable trades, three going back up, which for me, how many times have I told you guys, as soon as it touches the channel line, the top or the bottom, I'm moving my stop loss literally right to the line, one tick behind it. I don't care because it's, if it's been respecting it, it's probably going to turn around. Now we bounced around and then it came all the way back down again uh, out of there. Now this channel, let's look, and that was a huge move. It went literally from one side of the channel to the other. Uh, but let's look at this 29.94. Let's go back to an hour. And what I love is you can go down here and hit this little button and it'll get you straight. Uh, 29.94. Now I told you on, I gotta re-isolate this real quick. And that is 
3062. Oh. I just want to show you 3062. All right. So on roller coaster on the one hour, it picked it up way back over here. 2945. It got you into this all the way up to the, where it painted the three. 45, my God, it's 55, 75 points. That's 300 ticks. Uh, that's a monster move. But on that pullback, I told you that I would, the rules say you should take this right here, that uh, 3,007. But if you go down 29.94, 29.94, I believe is the six four moving average line. So remember I told you that I would have, this was earlier before I even looked at this. I haven't even looked at the charts today. So I would have taken that trade out of there because of everything was pointing the 535 oscillators getting smaller, stochastics crossed over, biases long, daily 240 and hour were all trending up and this big old monster move, uh, before I would have taken that that six four moving average line. If we go back to five minutes, twenty nine ninety four. That was your roller coaster move to go long. That uh, out of there. So it's using all of the indicators together. Now let's let's add in bits on top of this, and let me show you on using bits. So. Bits came over, you take one of the rules on bits is when the cyan color line crosses the yellow, that is your signal usually to go long. And it did right here. So it actually got you in before the roller coaster move actually got you in. On If you miss this move on the retest where the cyan comes down, touches it, and then takes off again, it, it does that a lot where it'll come down and touch it. it does, you think it's going to cross over, but it doesn't. I, you got to wait till the next candle to see what happens. Um, and then it did. It took off and went up. Same way with up here. We touched it again. It came up. And finally, it broke through. Came back up again. And it just barely got it and then dropped. And then once it crossed over again, it took off like a rocket. Now... Didn't take a genius uh, to figure out here. This, that was a nice move uh, on roller coaster there. Now let's go down. Let me turn off bits. I typically leave bits off until I'm grading a trade and then I turn it on to help me time an entry that's on there. So let's, uh, let's go backwards. And Paul talks about trading in the groove. So let me just turn off Elliott wave bits, everything. So we have monster move, really good move. I like the moves where it paints the red line for your stop loss line. Those are really good moves. Now this one was a profitable trade. Um, definitely uh, once it hits and it takes off, I move my stop loss to the entry line with one tick profit so that it co it'll cover in case it stops you out. I want to catch these takeoff ones that, you know, rock it off and you never see them again. That uh, like this one was two candles and it took off. Uh, but it's just good move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. This one never activated. So you, you can't even count that one because you never took it. 13, 14, I'm going to say a loss on that one. So 14 winners, one loss, 15 winners, 16 winners. Let's just say you got not knocked out of that one is two, 16 winners and two losers. That's a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good indicator to give you an idea. I like, uh, if, if you don't have a lot of time in the day, say you're going to, uh, drop down and you have 30 minutes to trade. You can drop down into these two and three minute ones, 
Now you have to keep in mind that the longer term timeframes of what's going on. Now I can't go far enough back. I think I can get it on five minutes. Yeah. So I know this 240, this is a 240 uh, channel. You can go down and do an hour channel also, but I can't go far enough back for the channels to show up when I go down to the two and three minute charts. So I kind of stay away from there. I like, uh, but you have to see which one is in the groove. I like to know where we're at in this channel because I don't want to take a signal to go short right here if we're at the bottom. Now the other way around, it gives me a signal when we're going below the center channel line, that's a good uh, signal to take and take it short from there. Juan, uh, pull up your videos on that came with your uh, indicator and it explains uh, how to use all of those um, in the instructional videos. If you don't have them, you can uh, just Google trade the fifth. Uh, email Damien and he'll send you, he's got, he's got them already like on a, a cheat sheet basically where he can send them to you quickly. I don't have them. We have so many videos. I couldn't tell you uh, where it's actually at, but if you just Google um, bits, uh, tra trade the fifth or W5T bits uh, training video, and it should pull right up on Google. If you can't find it, uh, email me uh, or email Damien and he'll send it over to you. All right, somebody else give me another one. Uh, Gary, um, on the when it prints the trailing stop, uh, it just does it automatically, and it's not after the first. Well, maybe I guess it kind of does. I don't know. It started printing it up over here, um, and you just, you know, this candle closes, move it to the top of the other one. This candle goes down and closes, next candle opens, you move it to the top of this candle, which would be right here. Same way right there, that candle closes, next one opens, goes down right there. Uh, you just keep going down. Now that one came very, very close right here, That, uh, but it made it all the way to the bottom of that channel and then stopped you out right there. 6B. Do I even have six B on there? Let's see. We're just gonna do continuous contract that's on here. All right. We're gonna go to daily. Let me turn off roller coaster. I'm gonna look at the big picture. What do I got? These are British pound. All right, so we have a downtrend going from here to here. And I, let me draw, I'm gonna draw one channel. And what do we do on that other one? We did white for the longer term, didn't we? So let's go up here. We gotta go take this high point here because we went kind of sideways here and then it dropped off. So I'm gonna pick this high right here and then I'm gonna go down to the low of that candle there. I'm gonna look at the channel. Uh, doesn't look pretty. It it's uh, It's been close, but we haven't been top and bottom. I mean, sure this is high low close divided by three yep. I don't like that one so let's take it off let's draw it again it remembers whatever channel it was the last time you that you drew it so because of this big dip right here I'm thinking we went from one side of the channel to the other all right I like this channel a little bit better one because it's been since April and we didn't tag the bottom, but we've had some big spikes up and down uh, through there. I, kind of, I like it because it's touched on these right here in the middle. So something's close around there. So, all right, so we have the daily. Now let's go down to 240. And... 
man, that just dropped off like a rock on Mar in March. So we're going to go here. Now we're going to pick the red channel. And I'm going to go... I'm going to draw this twice, I think. One here. I did the top of that point to where we're at right here. All right, and then I like to blow it up and see. Let me open this up right here. Okay, I like where that drops. See where we touch that center channel line? That's, uh, we've been pretty accurate from when you drop that. It measures, um, when you set your channels the way I have them, uh, let's right click this. In here, you, it comes standard with close. Now my uh, fourth wave pullback channel is set on close. It makes, if you watch, it makes the lines a little bit bigger. If you see them jump up, watch them when they go down. It kind of tightens them up uh, a little bit. I like it on that one, that's where I have them. And that's underneath my profile videos on how to set those up. All right, so we have longer term white channel, red channel is 240. So now I'm gonna go down to an hour. I don't like isolating and doing Elliott Wave stuff on a daily or a 240 because there's too much uh, room in there for it to move around. What time is it? Still got, still got time left. So, all right, one hour. We are going to go, you should go, 527, 26. Really truthfully, you should isolate off this high right here of 526. I like this candle right here because it was kind of before it went up. So I'm going to take this one here. Let's turn, oops, I got to go. This little box right here will make this uh, center panel bigger where you can see it, but you go back. So there's our, count. I'm going to go right there, 11,769. So I'm going to turn on the Elliott wave. 11,769. Takes five to seven seconds. And we had a failed wave, actually. Failed twice, the A and the B, which was one, two, the three, and then the it so that is telling you no, that's on a one hour. So let's go down, let's scroll backwards so we can see the, now actually, you know what? I would, I would guarantee you that would fail. In my opinion, I would have never taken that fifth wave move and I'll tell you why. Because we did a longer term 240 higher time frame channel and it's telling you that there might be a fifth wave move right next to the top of the channel line. Well, how many times, other than once, since April 14th, for basically five weeks, we've only popped out of that channel one time at the top. I'm, I'm not gonna take that trade. The fifth wave target is outside of the channel. So that would have been a reason no. Uh, and another reason is this came up and this would have been the three and then this would have been the four right here before it came back out. So let's draw a fourth wave pullback. We should, if this thing comes out right, it should, uh, these rules should be violated in here somewhere. All right, so one, I'm not gonna take this trade because we're at the top of a 240 channel line, okay? We did, uh, this would have been the top of the third and this red candle would have, would have been the bottom of the four. Now when it came back up, it painted a new one down below down here. All right, so let's see. No, it actually it actually ended up going lower. So let, let's remove this because I, I want you guys to do this accurately. So there's your three, and we're gonna to go to the bottom of that four right there. Uh, and let me explain this again why I did that. 
this would have been the way for low right here, this red candle. Next candle opened up, okay? And then the next candle opened up on the yellow line and then went down and made a lower low. So the four moved from this to this one. See the difference? Uh, and let me, let's see. I'm gonna take that, take that regression channel off. Now let's draw another one, wave three to this wave four right here. Look how the channel is different. See the new channel line, how much higher it is for your entry point? So by, this was where your wave four was. So you shouldn't get long until this candle is outside of here. Well, if you wouldn't have redrawn your fourth wave channel uh, back, you would have said, hey, this thing met the rules. I need to take it. And it did make a little bit of profit, but it came down and failed. But when it made a new four with that candle before it took off out of there, it went down and made a new four. You immediately need to take that channel off and draw a new one from that three to the new wave four low, which gave you this one. So now you're not gonna take it until you're outside of this channel line. Now let's grade this. We're almost to the top of a 240 channel line. I'm not taking a fifth wave move when we're that close to the top. So there's a negative, all right? You need to be above the 6.4 moving average, which once it comes out, I wanna retest of it. Uh, because it doesn't typically just go straight out. Next candle it did, it came down. So that, uh, and we were above the 6.4 moving average. So you had one reason to go, yes, one reason, no. All right, drop down here. We had, we did have a yellow uh, bias, went green. It was green on that candle, so you had two reasons. Now let's do the oscillator and let me do the fib. We're going to do the 9140 and that your wave four was right here. So we're going to take this, go to the high of wave three, which you can see my mouse right here. And you drop it right on that line. Okay, now we didn't crown out there. Now you remember me earlier saying, I don't like to take a fifth wave move unless it has a crown. There's some of them that make it, but the ones that typically like majority of the time make it have a nice little crown on that fourth wave pullback which it didn't didn't do it so now i got two reasons to say no two reasons to say yes we were above the six four moving average and we were outside of that channel so there was one reason to go and the bias so two yes two no all right it's only 50 50 right now now look at your stochastics down here let me move this up a little bit Look how we didn't even, uh, we came down, came back up, we got the green to go long, but it never, it never took off and went up above. Like typically on a move like that, it's going straight up. This thing curved right as it turned uh, the green arrow that it crossed over the 20, it was already turning over to hump back down again. So that's three reasons not to take this trade. So you have three no's and two yeses. If I don't have six or seven yeses, I don't take it. So I think this is, um, this was, I'm glad, who was it? Uh, Trisha, thank you for uh, suggesting that. I'm glad you're back on too. Uh, I hope that this helped you guys on grading it um, of why not to take that trade for a long. So, but we're not completely uh, out of not being able to make a trade. So let's go down to 15 minutes. We're not taking a fifth wave trade on that one. All right. So let's turn on roller coaster. And let's see what we got in here. 15 minutes. Ain't got nothing on it. Five minutes. All right. On that fourth wave pullback. Nope. Now, when you say, uh, is it in the groove? Does this roller coaster move look like it's in the groove? Uh, that was one that, you know, was up there. No, 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 no. There was one. Five no's, one yes. So start comparing these things when you're looking at this hour time frame and you're like, man, I don't know if I should take this trade or not. 
uh, it's just not looking right that I don't know if I'm going to take it. Well, then drop down to those other time frames and take a look. You know, what's going on? The, oh wait, let's turn this on. Let's look and see what's going on. Is roller coaster in the, is the market trending basically or, or in a move? No. I mean, even on this one, now there were some smaller ones in here on the four minute, but that, oh, what day was that? That was last week, Sunday. Uh, just not in the groove. Now the three minute, three minutes not looking too bad. Look at this nice long move there, nice long move there. That was a small move, nice long move. Uh, never really activated, it turned green, but you would have never taken that. Nice move, nice move, nice move, nice move, nice move. This three minute is actually not too bad, but that's if you wanted to find a trade, you know, you only had 30 minutes to an hour to trade. You can go in here and you've got to get into the habit of starting on that daily time frame and framing your chart that because you need to know what's going on. That we're in a downtrend on 6B. So, you know, if you want to cut your losses, just take short trades that are out of there trading off those channel lines. Go down to your 240. There's your 240 line. Now I don't take roller coaster moves on a 240. There's your little reset arrow. Put your chart back to where you can see it. Uh, there's just too much that can go on on a 240. Uh, now, if a 240 is popping up on a top channel line to go for a short, uh, like for instance, this one right here, came on over here and at Basser, it, this is where you'll get chopped up. Um, I just don't like taking them. You, you don't have enough capital in your account to absorb this. And even if you did, that'd be a stupid risk for that much. You go down on, um, you know, in five minutes, you kind of know in 30 minutes if something's going to go on. On a 240, you don't know for days, you know, uh, it's just too long of a chart on it. All right, guys, it's eight o'clock. It's been an hour. You got any final questions before we close this out? Was this helpful tonight, guys? Um, I wanted to, I mean, I didn't trade today. Uh, I could have went through and looked for some stuff to put on here, but I'm like, I wanted you all to just throw something at me. Yes, Gary, it is recorded. Um, usually it'll be up uh, the next day. Now, um, one of the things that we talked about at our sales meeting last week um, was we're going to start emailing these videos out, um, I think on Fridays to everybody um, that's on that list uh, that has a link to both of them, this one and the one Paul does tomorrow. So you guys can tune in tomorrow. I believe it's noon. I think it's 11 a.m. Central Time uh, or 12. Uh, if you go to W5T, you'll see it on there. Uh, on it. Greg, thanks so much, man. I, I hope that this helps you guys on getting in. Well, I mean, getting into your own groove, just like roller coaster needs to get into groove. You need to get into a groove where you don't even think about it. You click on a symbol. The first thing you do is go to a daily chart, draw a channel, go to a 240, draw a channel, go down to an hour and see the, you see the big picture but you see opportunities inside of it that's in there. Federico, I appreciate it, man. Juan, Gary, Greg. Trust you, you're already gone already on me. All right, guys, you all have a good night. Thanks so much for attending tonight. Appreciate it.